my dearest friends, now in the big city in Atlanta, Georgia. Look at him. It's Chris Kendrick. And for you folks listening on audio, you can watch this on YouTube too. Chris, in Catalyst Fitness, you're looking well. How are things going, man? I am good, Mark. It's good to see you again. It's been, uh, it's been a while. It's good to be back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you uh, did yourself a minor injury the other day. Everything going well? Everything's good. Yeah, it was, it was minor. It was playing, um, I play an Irish sport up here called Gaelic football. It's like a, it's like a mixture of soccer and, and rugby and basketball and volleyball. You throw it into a blender and you, you get Gaelic football. So yeah, I picked up a minor injury, but I'm, I'm good. Good to go again. I'm wondering how you get injured in that sport. Hey, listen, golf is infinitely <laughs> safer and folks want to deal with some stretching and stuff, which you're going to help us with. But before that, for folks who didn't catch your first podcast with us, please tell us about you. Yeah, sure. So I'm originally from Ireland. Hopefully the accent is still hanging around a little bit at least. Uh, but I've been in the U.S. for over 17 years now. Um, played golf for yourself at Columbus State for yeah. four years. Yeah. And uh, worked at Diverge Fitness in Columbus for 11 years after that. And I've been up here in Atlanta since September of 2019. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. It's a uh, it's been an interesting move up here, given everything that's been going on in the last couple of years. Um, but no, it's great. I'm really enjoying it up here. There's a lot going on, especially now with the, the baseball team winning. And mm-hmm. There's a good vibe around the place, so it's going well up here. Yeah. Hey, and uh, you failed to mention the fact that you're TPI certified and all that sort of stuff, too. I guess in our industry, it's important to know that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's that's very true. I've been... I've been with the TPI guys since basically the beginning when, when those guys got started, it was right around the time that, that I got into the field. And, and so I've been, I've been on, on the TPI train since they, since they started and uh, learned a lot from those guys and um, learned a lot from my time in Columbus state as well. My, my degrees in exercise, exercise science. So all of that together. And, and it's been very useful to, uh, to my job. Hey, before we get into the the stretching drills and the mobility stuff and that, which is just so crucial to not just good golf, but overall well-being, I want you just to wax a little bit for a little while about this whole, and it feels like we're in this race for speed in golf. Um, What's your take on the whole thing? You've been an accomplished player in your own right now, trainer. Give us your insights, please. Yeah, so it is obviously a hot topic with with Bryson and everything that he has done. You know, I'm, I think it's, I'm supportive of it. I think the stats back it up, the importance of distance to the game now, especially at the professional level. Mm-hmm. And I think it just has to be done in a safe manner. I think people need to keep that in mind. You know, not everybody is like Bryson. So therefore that doesn't, you know, you shouldn't be, if not everybody shouldn't be training like Bryson either. Um, so it needs to be done in a safe manner that your body can can cope with the stresses that you're putting on it, because it is a lot of stress. And at the end of the day, if you're putting too much of, too much stress on there, something's going to break. And, and the last thing you want is is to break down with injury, because then you're not able to play. So um, I'm I'm all for it, but in a safe manner. Hey, I think what Bryson sort of highlighted some is it's not just moving faster. He has gotten infinitely stronger as well. Um, this, Correct. Is, is this the standard approach? Is this, let's say I came to you or one of the listeners or viewers of this comes to Chris Kendrick at Catalyst and goes, all right, I want to pick up some gas. It's, yeah. it's, it's the all-encompassing um, approach to things, correct? No, it is. Like, I mean, you, you, have, to be, you have to be stable enough you have to be mobile enough and you have to be strong enough in, in order to support these faster speeds that you're, go, you're looking to go. And so if, if there's cracks in those areas, you, you're eventually going to break down. So yes, it is. It's, it's an all kind of inclusive endeavor. And something I've learned from you um, that I use often, you know, because everyone wants to go faster, but then I make the analogy that you taught me about way back and you like, you know, to have a Ferrari, it's only as good as the braking system. So going That's fast correct. is one thing, but slowing down is another because it's part of going fast. But talk about that before we get into the flexibility stuff. No, absolutely. I mean, that's, and that is the way to think about it. I mean, you're, if, if the braking system is not there and not strong enough, you're, it's not going to, the body's pretty smart, right? So it's going to say, hey, you're not able to go or we're not able to slow you down. So we're not going to allow you to go. 
Okay. So it's it's definitely something that has to be taken into account when you're working on when you're working on trying to get a little bit faster for sure. Yeah, it's fascinating stuff. This is for, that's for another time though, because there has been requests here on social media for us to to get somebody on to talk about stretching. It's a valuable part of stuff. I mean, I'm going through injury right now, and proper posture, just good mobility, you know, keeping everything oily and good is is very important, especially to the golf swing. So absolutely. So let's dive in. You've you're going to share five exercises with us, and you're going to show them too. So. If you listen yep. in audio, folks, I'll describe as well as I can, but go to YouTube, go search for Mark and Norman Golf, and you'll find it. Right here, Chris, um, teeing us off. You've got a wall right in behind you there. You spoke of yep. wall slide, which, look, I've known you for a while, but I'm not familiar with your wall slide. <laughs> All right. So the wall slide is a very basic one, and it's one that obviously everybody has access to a wall, so it's pretty uh -huh. easy. Um, so this is it's a great one for, for posture. That's... As everybody knows, we, we spend most of our time kind of in this flex position, whether it's yeah. driving or you're walking on a computer or you're on your phone. So everything starts to go this way. So with this, we're basically going to try and get you going at least back to neutral, but for a lot of people, it's going to feel like they're going back the other way. So you basically just go up against the wall. You want your heels against the wall. You want your butt against the wall. And you want your upper back against the wall. Ideally, you also want your head against the wall, but there are a lot of people out there that have what's known as like it's called a forward head carriage like this. Yeah, so if you're not able to get your if you're not able to get your head against the wall, that's fine, but at least try to get the others, right? So it's heels, hips, upper back, natural curvature in the spine. So don't think you have to flatten out your lower back, just whatever the natural curvature is for you is fine. Okay. So you're up against the wall, let's assume that your head is against the wall as well. 90 degrees with the arms to start the position. Now, this position in itself is going to be extremely difficult for a lot of people. Chris, so I, I this is Chris, this is where a lot of people would yeah, will I, stop, and this would be enough. I, well, I just want to do that real fast, folks, for the audio listeners. Chris has got his back to the wall, heels, buttocks, uh, shoulders, back of head against the wall, and he's raised his arms up to where basically the biceps are sort of parallel with the shoulders. And he's looking like field goal post to me. That's right. But all of the arm from the elbow through the knuckles and even the wrist bones, I guess, touching the wall too. That's right. So that's a sneaky one there that you just mentioned. If you, a lot of people as well, they'll be fine here, and then you get them to flatten out their wrists. And even for myself here, I can feel a change. It becomes a lot more difficult. Just that little flattening of the wrist makes it more demanding. Yeah, that's something that I struggle with. And for all those folks that maybe get into too much extension in the wrist in the one side or they got their shoulders a little too internal, you're right. Just yeah. get into that place. That's going to stretch you off pretty well. Absolutely. So you can make this a little, you can make, you can make this tougher, right? So just, just having your arms up like this, like I said, is for a lot of people, it's going to be very, very difficult. And they may not be able to get the back of their hands back here. So right. here it might be even difficult for, for a lot of people. That's completely fine. And so what you obviously want to work towards is trying to rotate it back to where the back of your hands can eventually touch. And I've got to say this for someone who suffers from the forward head a little bit, for, uh, where what Chris did there, folks, was he kept his elbows against the wall and sort of allowed the knuckles to rotate away from the wall. So the arms were a bit more in a 45 degree angle. But for someone in me, Chris, who so struggles with that forward head thing and some, yeah. some uh, disc issues really in my neck, um, yeah. getting into that place, it's, it's, it's hard to sort of be there. And so I find I have to use my back and my shoulders a whole lot more and get them in behind me because I've been so rounded for so long. And then when I try and turn my arms back there, I feel like it's just causing all sorts of issues if I don't use my back properly. That's correct. Yeah. You want to try and feel like those shoulder blades kind of come, come down towards your back pockets if you have uh, you back pockets. All right. So that's the wall. Right. So that's the wall. Yeah. Side. So, yeah. So this, well, we can make this a little bit tougher again. So let's assume like here would be level one where you can't get back. Level two is back and touching. And you can make this a little bit more active, right? So you can actively press against the wall with your arms, and that adds a little bit more spice to it, just by pressing against the wall. Now, not so much that you claw, right, but 
pressing against the wall makes this more challenging. And then you can take it a step further and try to make the letter Y without coming off the wall and then come back down to the goal post position. So now, what he's doing right now is going from that field goal post position in the arms and keeping the arms against the wall and he's pushing them up the wall to make a letter Y. So essentially, just straightening the elbows, correct, Chris? But the form, That's right. the connection to the wall remains the same. The connection stays, yeah. And, and when you straighten those arms, you, you may not be able to straighten them all the way to that Y position. So maybe here, like, maybe you go halfway to the Y, that's where you start. Yeah. But you're gonna find, even if you do like, let's say a couple of sets of 10 reps of this, you're gonna find as the reps go by, you're going to be like, okay, yeah, that was really, really tough. And now, oh, it's a little bit looser, and it's a little bit looser. And before you know it, you might have a full Y created. So frequency and kind of picking away at this stuff is critical. And you notice that it's going to get better. Okay. Um, here's a question. You know, we've all got our safe word, like raspberry or something. When, when my trainer is working on me, you're not around with that Theragun. I'm like, whoa, raspberry. And now you've got to ease off a little bit. Where is where is the safety here? Because I can see folks doing this and they're like, oh, I'm watching Chris, I can see this, I can feel it. But then you start mm -hmm. moving and you feel that hitch. Do you try and yeah. push through that or, or, or what's the mindset? Yeah, so I like to use a scale of one to 10 with stuff like this. Obviously, if, like, if this stuff is causing you intense pain or discomfort, then you need to stop. Okay. And, and you need to maybe look at an alternative opinion from, from the medical side to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. But from a from a pain discomfort standpoint, especially if you're having some trouble maybe with the shoulder or something like that, and if you're doing this, and let's say if the pain discomfort is, you know, maybe it's about a two or a three on a scale of one to ten, right? Especially if you're dealing with something prior, that's fairly manageable in my in, in, in my mind. You know, two to three, but if it starts to creep towards four or five and above, then you need to stop. All right, cool. And then just perhaps just get into that static position and hold it for a count of 30, 15, whatever, what's your recommendation? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can, you can use this in a few different ways, right? So you can, you can just hold it right there for time. Uh -huh. If you just hold it in that position, it's going to tax those postural muscles. And maybe the first time you do it, you can only hold it for 10 seconds just because things fatigue. And then maybe you go to 20 and then maybe you go to 30. And then with the Ys, you can, reps with that so you can kind of play around with both time and reps on the ball it is amazing how you know when posh has been i won't say built but formed over years to a certain way how even getting into the stretch you yeah. will feel like your muscles are really grafting i mean it, it, it's it's not a yeah. it, you're involved when you're doing this kind of thing i don't care what your your, your fitness level is no, absolutely. And again, like because we live most of our day in the flex position where all those muscles are just essentially turned off, mm -hmm. and then you turn them on, and you don't have a choice but to turn them on in a position like that. That's why you get the feel, sometimes the feeling of, oh, what the heck's going on back there? Dang because they've been turned off all day. It was like, holy cow, I've got muscles in my back. All right. That's uh, right. That's, that's the wall slide. Um, Yep. The second one is the upper body wall twist. Uh, this sound. Yep. All right. So obviously we're we'll back to the wall here, but we're in the half kneeling position this time. So inside foot is against the wall. Inside knee is against the wall. Yeah. Inside hip is against the wall. So that whole inner leg is connected to the wall. All right. Now the back foot, I like it to be engaged. Like this, so like the toes are active here and rather than being relaxed like this. That's a small detail, but to me it's important. Okay. Nice tall posture. Now keeping that connection on the inner leg against the wall, you're gonna try and turn your upper body into the wall. So it looks like this. So while you're doing that, Chris, I want to describe it to your folks. So folks yeah. are like a Bulgarian split squat. He's got his left knee uh, at a 90 degree angle, left hip against the wall, knee and ankle. Then right knee is back underneath him. He's resting on the right knee and that leg is at 92. And what he's done now is he's taken his torso and rotated to his left towards the wall and towards the left knee. Now he's got himself again with those arms in the field goal post position with both elbows against the wall. 
That's correct, yeah. And that elbow that comes around, like, it's going to be tough. In this case, the direction I'm facing, that right elbow, to get it in contact with the, with the wall. Some people may not be able to get there. And again, that's fine, but that's what you want to work towards, is getting contact with that right elbow in this case. So and obviously the same. Yeah, so so pop up a little closer to the camera because I got a few I've got a few questions here for you. First off, yep. you make a really good point because you said you'd scale these things a little and and like with that wall slide, there's scale yep. where you can just stand there and then you add the movement to it. Or maybe yep. you can't get your knuckles and the wrist bones against there, but you have the elbows slightly forward. Yeah. Right in this um, upper body wall twist position. So I got my left side against the wall, my right knee back, and I'm in that, that kneeling position. And I rotate, and I can't get all the way there. Then yep. do I just hold there, or do I try and pulse the thing? What is, what's the idea? Yeah, so I would, I would initially hold there and just stay there for maybe 10 to 20 seconds and see how that feels. But you can also try to breathe your way into uh, more rotation as well. So for example, let's say you're in this half kneeling position, you're set, and you turn, and you're like, okay, that's as far as I can go. All right, when you stay here, take a big inhale, exhale, and then try to go a little bit further. Stay here, inhale, exhale, and you might find that you can go even further still. So you can use breathing to get a little bit more range with some of these things as well. Yeah, so you breathe your way into the deeper stretch. So, so that was mm -hmm. left forward, right knee back, left side against the wall. And then yeah. that would really hit the through swing, the, the follow through side. That's um, right. Then if you go the other way around with right knee against the wall and turning to your right side, that would essentially hit your back swing and, and improve the flexibility there too for right hand. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. And, and the drawdown is obviously just sort of holding your position and trying to breathe into the deep stretch. For the real mobile folks, they could probably get all the way around there and get, uh, I guess, even their chest against the wall to a certain extent, right? They could, yeah. And then for the super advanced people, you can get your lower body involved in it a little bit, right? So this is obviously you can knee back knee down on the, on, the, on the ground. Yeah. But you can also make this a little more challenging by coming up so and turning it. So what he's doing now, folks, you're listening. Again, go to the YouTube to check it out. He went from the trail knee on the ground, but then pushed up into a low lunge, I guess. That's right. Yeah, right like the bottom of a lunge position. Yeah. And if you want to get, like, you can, there, there, again, there are levels to this, right? So if you're up here, that's a little bit easier to stay here than it is to go a little bit lower and try to hold it. So all the way down to when you're just bare enough. So you're, you're an animal, bus. I can see you can it. you can play around. <laughs> you can play around. Yeah, that deep lunge doing it looks pretty gruesome. Uh, okay, um, that one. In fact, again, a lot of the stuff I reg I, I've learned, I, I sort of regurgitate and I claim it from you. Uh, you you told me earlier that you learn a squat from someone, but after two weeks, it's yours, right? So that's right. That's I, right. I do the version of what you just said there with your elbows against the wall, but I do a big wide sort of a windmill all the way around, you know, yep. rotating my palm against the wall. Anyway, that's just yep. you can check it out on social media. Right. Three. Yes. Looks like you've done number some of number three already. It's called the half kneeling hip stretch. <laughs> it looks yes. like you did some of that in the previous one too. Yeah. So. All right, so half kneeling, so you're on the ground here again. We'll, we'll go into the more advanced version here in a little bit, but I'll go right like in front there. And so back knee can be on the ground. If it's, if you've got 90 90 with both legs, that's fine. But you can add a little bit to it and get some stretch on that back hip flexor. If you slide that leg back a little bit, so there's a little bit more stretch on the tread and hip, okay? Yeah, it's the lead. It's the lead leg that we're really working on here. But if you've got the ability, why not double up and work on both, right? Mm -hmm. Next part of this is 
the front foot. So in my case, I've got the right foot in front. So I'm going to allow the right foot to turn or to come up a little bit. I'm going to allow this knee to go out. All right. Yeah. Left hand is flat. Now here's where it gets challenging. The inside elbow, so my right elbow, I'm going to see how far I can slide it down towards the mat. And now I should have done the left because my left is better. All right, so this is what it looks like for your listeners. Chris was in uh, very much a position like he was in the previous exercise with left knee on the ground, leg at 90, right knee forward, foot on the ground, leg at 90. Then he stretched the left leg back and he's got his left hand on the ground, his left palm. And then with his right elbow, he's tracing that down the inside portion of the lower part of the right leg. So imagine that 90 degree leg. Well, he's trying to go as far down with the elbow and he's almost touching the ground now. Chris, I mean, this must be just lighting the hip flexors up, but that thing's so you, everywhere, right? Yeah, you're really going to feel it on the inside. That's so for me, the right leg, but the groin area and the hip joint, you're really going to feel a stretch there. And like I said, this right one is, is the one that causes me more issues on the left, so I should have done the left myself look better <laughs> <laughs> um, but no i mean and, and you can see here as well like i was saying my right side is a little tougher than my left and i have this the body didn't find the path of least resistance so if you look at my left elbow i'm wanting to cheat here i'm so wanting to that elbow right. so i can go lower right so you need to be careful of that stuff and you can add some more to this by let's say if you stay down here you feel that stretch for maybe 10 to 15 seconds and then Oh, now you can add some upper body yeah, to it and hold it down. Hey, you know what this looks like when you were down there? You know, you've been, Chris, open disclosure for folks, when I was with Columbus State, was our trainer for our golf team for a long time. In many position, many ways, that sort of prone position you were in almost looked like those bear crawls you would have them do. Yeah. And, and then I guess to that a little farther, if anyone's ever done like Spider-Man's, you know, or that dinosaur walk, whatever you used to call it, it's the same sort of thing, but you're just down there, you're still, and you're trying to rotate down that leg as much as possible. So I feel yeah. like I'm hitting you in your, your, your core area as well, correct? That's right. Yeah. And you can, you can add a little bit more core activation to it, just like that wall twist that we just done. So the knee is on the ground here, right? So now you can take it off. So now he's lifted his knee. The, the trail knee is off the ground. Yeah, so now you've got a greater distance to go down, right? And your legs are working more because you're not on the ground. So picture this. Uh, one, like, picture this. A, a, a one-legged plank with a forward leg in 90 forward. Now he's doing this into an open book with a chest. You have to look at YouTube to check out what's going on. Right, in the interest of saving you and not having you hurt yourself doing this, just kidding, because you're a machine. Um, that's the half kneeling hip stretch. Um, yeah. while you're on the ground down there, the shin yeah. box, this, this sounds fascinating yeah. to me. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a really good one. And I am, um, because I'm, uh, I'm an honest guy, I'm not going to choose just exercises that I'm good at. Yeah, this okay. is one that, this is one that's difficult for me. And right. so I'm going to go through some different levels on this again, right? So you want to set it up like so, right? So my left foot is up against the inside of my right thigh, and my right heel is pretty close to my right heel. Yeah, again, okay. for, the folks, for the folks listening, Chris, that this almost looks like that, you know, that 1990 stretch where you rotate your legs yes. over in front of you. So you're sitting, you know, straight up yeah. with your back as possible, which is a challenge for me because when I'm in that, I'm always feeling rounded over because my flexibility is not that great. But he's basically got both booty cheeks on the ground. Left leg yeah. is forward. Knee is rotated inward. Right knee is backward with a foot behind him. And he has his left foot against his right thigh with his left arm sort of propping himself up. Well, both arms behind him on the ground now. Correct. Yeah. And you can, if this, so this right leg here, if you've got some knee issues or something like that, and you can't bend it as much as that, and just give yourself a little bit more freedom here. All right. Right? Just let it come out more. So where it's more 1990 position, right? This would be more, obviously, more 1990 position. Gotcha. I'm bringing, I'm bringing it a little bit 
it's a little bit more, right? Okay. So from here, this is where it gets tough, all right? So we start with the, with the well, again, this, this for a lot of people could be enough, and that's completely fine. That's right? just sitting in that position for a little while. Correct, correct. Now, if you want to take it an extra step, you put your hands behind you for a little bit of support, right? Okay. Now you want to create this position, but on the other side. So he's rotating over almost like the 1990 thing now, and he's gone to a place where with a rotation to Chris's right, now his right leg is forward and his left leg is now in behind his right uh, foot. Um, this looks deep. I mean, this looks deep, Chris, the stretch. Yeah, it is. This is a really good one. Um, it's a tough one. And so the hands back here is obviously going to help you, right? They're going to allow you to stay with that posture because because tell me this when you're doing this shin that. box or you're doing the 1990 with the spine as vertical and as straight as possible that is one of the key factors correct because like i say when i do this i'm all hunched over in my chest heads forward i'm getting my legs around but i feel like i'd be better off if i was in, in a more upright spinal position yeah it's going to make it tougher but that's the optimal position that you want yeah Absolutely. So how, many, so how many of these do you do or just hold it in that place? You can play with both. You can play with both. You can hold it in place or you can, you can start playing with it back to the reps. Right. Um, but the next level from there then is going to be obviously the more support from your hands behind you. So it's going to be here, nice and upright. Okay. And if you can, keep your hands up and high. And then you're going to have to do that. So no hands on the ground for the yeah. step up of this. It's pretty challenging. This is a really tough one for me. The hip area is the area that gives me trouble and one that I have to always work on. Hey, so I this is pretty tough. Okay, you take a load off. I need to ask you a question. Yeah. You bring up the hip and the hip flexors. And to me, almost mm -hmm. every golfer I encounter, the hip flexor is tight. But I heard it said that tight hip flexors are misconstrued really as weak hip flexors. I'd love your commentary there and, and your take on that situation because it seems to me like everyone struggles through that area. Yeah, so the hip flexors become tight for a lot of people because they're so overactive. They're always on, right? Okay. So in a seated position, driving, Again, like everything is everything is that we do is front on the front and there's nothing on the back. So glutes are shut off for a lot of the time. Abs don't come in and support the structure either. So those hip flexors just get super active and super tight. And they pull they can pull your pelvis into what's called an anterior tilt, so it tilts downwards like that. Right. And then that lower back gets stressed as well. Gotcha. So it's a critical area critical area to keep loose for the health of your lower back. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Uh, well, what you were doing there, I'm sure that was working that area out pretty well, correct? It sure does. Yeah, it sure does. Bucks. Okay, yeah. we've got four doozies already. The final one, and these are all golf specific, although they'll help you with overall well-being. Um, right. The final one is the upper body rotation to a downward dog. Okay. okay, yeah. So we're in the all fours position. So palms on the ground out in front of you, hands under the shoulders, basically on your knees, nice neutral back. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn upper body to the left as far as you can. Now, no hip movement to the side when you do this. Right. So it's a strict upper body rotation. So what Chris is doing right now, folks, is he's rotating to his left. His right palm stays on the ground. He's holding his hips in position with the knees on the ground. And then he's essentially just doing an open book, but without the hips drifting one way or the other, which, man, you're having to work hard with your core to keep that possible. That's right. So super still on the lower body. Once you've done, you can go once or twice per side. And then old school yoga Downward dog. This almost looks like a pike version there, Rob, as you're doing as you're doing that. Yeah, so it is a little bit modified from 
your teachers are looking at this, they would critique me. So it's a little bit modified, but we want heels. For some people, you might get to the ground, but I can't get to the ground, but I'm feeling like I'm trying to get there, right? Yeah. And the back of my knees, I'm feeling like I'm pushing them away from me. And I'm feeling like I'm reaching my head back towards my feet. And then from here, you should be able to just fall back down to the position you started in. And off you go, second round. So the cool thing about this, because when you went into that downward dog position, your voice was a bit muffled. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I can understand this because your head's in between your arms, but where your palms were and where your feet were, the balls of your feet, you didn't move position. You just went up into the downward dog. So you're going from that prone yeah. situation into the pike, you're doing that, and then you're coming back down into your uh, upper body rotation on all fours, basically, again. That's correct. And now you bring up a good point. So there, folks may not be able to do that. And yeah. so if they can't, they can modify. So let's assume that you'll be able to get at least some rotation, right? Right and left here. And then when you pipe up, let's say when you pipe up and you're like, okay, that's as far as I can go. All right, and then adjust. Then you just widen your feet a little bit. If you can't get all the way up and your legs stay bent, just move your feet back and then you go into that straight legged position. Hey, Chris, yeah. I want to ask you this. Um, when you're doing those rotations, which look like, to me, again, an open book where you lie on your ground, the ground and you open one side up, um, I noticed you were not doing those moves very fast. It was a very disciplined, metered, sort of measured movement as you were opening the one side up with the other hand on the ground. Is that for a reason? Yeah, I don't want to use momentum in order to get range of motion. And a lot right. of folks, I mean, I've found myself too. I just swing my arm behind me and I think I'm doing yeah. it, but I haven't rotated my rib cage or my torso, whatever you want to call it. You got to yeah. feel like that area is the, the, the genesis of the movement. Yeah, you start ripping things around without control and then you start putting on new stress on joints. Yeah. yeah. Man, these, these are five awesome stretches, but five stretches, I feel like if a person's been a bit sedentary, you just do these and this is going to get you on your way to some fitness too, right? Yeah, for sure. You can, like, like we, we just talked about there, there are so many levels to these. You can, you can start off at a fairly basic level and that might be difficult for you. And then if you want to take it all the way to the advanced side of the spectrum, you can, you can juice these things up pretty nicely. Mm. That last one, the upper body rotation of all fours. I've seen PGA Tour golfers do those on the range before they hit. Um, yep. And then you've, there's been variations thereof where almost like your one with the the half kneeling hip stretch where you're going with your elbow down your leg i've seen yeah. a version of that as well where they're opening up their body that's right yeah it's, it, and again like the the two areas that these five have focused on and i'm sure you see it all the time on tour I mean, we the areas that when i see folks here both the general population and golfers it's the two areas of the body that are almost always limited hip and mid spine oh yeah and so everything that we just talked about there and went through is heavily focused on those two areas i think if a lot if, if folks could get those areas even just a little bit better it's going to make you feel so much better and again like i said i i, I use a lot of the stuff i've learned from you 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 were always the one to say just incremental improvements just a little bit all the time you don't have to go from zero to hero just that little bit of improvement every day and that little awareness. Like I'm having to be very aware of my posture now. Um, yeah. I think it begins with the awareness of it all, right? Definitely, yeah, definitely. And with this sort of stuff, because it's not, it's a little bit, it's, it's very different when you're lifting weights or we talked about trying to generate speed. Yeah. When you're putting quite a bit of load on the body and a lot of stress, then it makes more sense to maybe be doing a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule if you're lifting to give yourself a day rest or something like that. But with stuff like this, because it's so low intensity and the load on the body is, is you know, very little, you can do this stuff every single day. And even if you only spend a couple of minutes, literally two minutes on this stuff every day, if you were to stand, if you, if you were to pick one of them and you were to stand up against the wall every day and you were to work through this and you did it every day for a couple of minutes, you would see massive improvements, both in how you feel with your posture, you may have some neck pain, you may have some shoulder pain, 
that would start to feel better. If you're playing golf, maybe you start to make the whole table thing a bit better. Maybe you can get your hands a little bit higher because those lats are starting to loosen up. It just has a domino effect and it only takes a little bit every day. Isn't it amazing how the body, when you put it in the right situation, begins to heal itself? It's such a cliche, but it's so true. Movement is medicine. It really is. Tremendous. Really is. Fantastic stuff. Man, awesome as always. Whenever I speak with you, I, I learn something. So I'm thankful that you would join us. I mean, I've, I've got things I can add to my list to go and do now. But the key is well, to do them. I, you know, it's, it's not start quick and then die, right? You've got to keep going. Um, yeah, just pick away. Just pick away. Now, folks, of course, you were listening to this. You can go and see it on YouTube as well. Chris, I know you put out a bunch of stuff on social media and YouTube as well. Please share where it is. Yeah, so Instagram, pretty active there. Chris Kendrick HP is the uh, Instagram handle. Mm -hmm. Chris Kendrick Human Performance on YouTube. Uh, Facebook, Chris Kendrick Human Performance as well. And you'll be able to find out more. I've got quite a bit of stuff out there now. And if they are in Georgia, specifically the Atlanta area, um, they yeah. can find you at Catalyst Fitness. That's right, Catalyst Fitness, we're in technically South Buckhead, and um, here in the city, we're, we're kind of close to uh, Piedmont Hospital, the Shepherd Center, that area of Buckhead is where we're located. So yeah, stop on by and come check us out if you're in the city. Keep up the great work, mate. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you having me.